Well, I'm going to show you how I actually created that in Illustrator. So what I did, the first thing I did was I measured my vessel diameter. So this is the one that I'll be using. And you have to measure the interior, so the inside of it. So I measured my inside to be about two and three quarters. So that worked the best. So now I need to make a circle that's two and three quarters. So it's the roundness of it. So what I go is in the Illustrator into the toolbar, I'm gonna select the ellipse tool. Then I'm just gonna click it once. And then it's gonna ask like the measurements. And so it's already in here cause I was working with it earlier, but it's 2.75 and then 2.75 for the height. You can click over here to maintain the proportions and then you just hit okay. And so there I, I have my circle. So that's the first thing. Now, next, what I'm gonna do is place my logo. So I'm gonna go ahead in another file I had this logo right here. So I'm gonna select it. I can either Control C, copy and paste it, or I can drag and drop. Either one works, but let's do a Control C for copy, what we're most used to. Then a Control V, like Victor, to paste. And so this is large for that diameter. So I'm just gonna reduce it. So I grab the corner and I hold down Shift to maintain the proportion so it doesn't get all crazy and then I place my logo. So before I even do anything else, I'm going to select both of those. And then at the top here in a toolbar, it'll say horizontal align center. So I just want to, and it shifts a little bit just to make sure that the alignment is correct. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I could probably move it up just a little bit. And it's not, I'm not going to keep it. It's not like permanent, but this is kind of looking how I want it to look right now. So the next thing I want to do is I want to place um, like the writing. So I have the hand poured in Maryland, soy, coconut, blend, wax. And then I also put on here, remove cover before lighting. Because the last thing I want someone to do is the wick be sticking out and they light this bad boy. And then the fire, then it, the flame is crazy because I'm using cardstock. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take the writing that I have over here and I'm gonna do another control copy and then I'm gonna paste over here. That way I don't have to um, retype it. But you could type it back in and just go and use the text tool. But since I already have it in here, then I'm just gonna move it kind of down to the bottom and again, I'm going to at least, let me see, select everything. And then I'm gonna do, again, the horizontal align center. And it just shifts it a little bit. I, again, just want to make sure everything's maintained. And then the next part, I wanna add the ribbon. So the ribbon is one of um, something I created separately in Adobe Illustrator. And so I pulled it from, these are my other labels. These are some print and cut labels that I have. So what I do is I'll just take one of these ribbons and I'll copy and paste it and bring it right back over here. And that's how I got my ribbon. So I'm just going to take this one right here and then paste it right over here. But I'm gonna remove this circle because I wanna show you guys how I make the circle. Okay, so this one is gonna go, I'm going to align it and make sure that I have that as well with my horizontal alignment. So it just makes sure everything is good. So the last part um, before I decide to take it, there's two more things I can make my wick size right here, or I can do it into um, Cricut Design Space and cut it. So let me tell you the difference. If I make my wick, if I make the wick size in here, it's going to leave me with like a little bit, let me see if you guys can see that. Can you see the little white? 
that it has because it doesn't cut it out exactly. That's what you get if you do it um, in here and bring it in. And then the circle one doesn't do it as much, but I could still see it. I want it to be clean. So in order to avoid that, what I can do is just maybe put a line where I would like it to go, a very thin stroke line. And so in order to do that, let me see. This one up here, I'm gonna do, um, let me copy this. So I'm gonna select it and just move it down and I'm holding down Alt and that's just gonna make a copy because I'm gonna alter this some and then I'm gonna alter this one. And this one is gonna be for like a cotton wick, so the circle, and the one down here is gonna be for the wooden wick. And what do I mean by that? Let me show you really quick. This is the wooden wick. And this will go right in there. So that I need to make the size of this rectangle. And so for the circle, the cotton wick, this is what I mean by that. Do, 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 do. And then it goes right in there. So let's go ahead and make those holes, at least how it's going to look. So I am gonna go over to the toolbar where it has the rectangle. Let's do the rectangle first. So with the rectangle, I'm just gonna click it and then the dialog box is gonna pull up and I want to make, I'm gonna do about five eighths by a half an inch. So that's what I wanna do. So let's see, one, well, no, I'm gonna do a little bit more, um, no, five eighths by, sorry, by about 330 seconds. So, because the thickness isn't that much. And this is where you can like measure out. So I know this is a half an inch, but I'm gonna do five eighths to make it a little bit larger so it doesn't have like a super tight fit. And then I'm gonna do 330 seconds, or you could do a quarter of, or an eighth of an inch, either one would work pretty decent. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and type in, um, let's see, five eighths. And then I'm gonna tab down, and then I'm gonna type in, well, it's already on here, but it's three thirty seconds, and then you tab, and then it kinda updates. So it's really like the point six two five. By, and you want to make sure that you have these written down by 0 0.094 because if we do the box in Cricut Design Space, we're going to need those measurements. So here I have it right here. But the issue now, I need to remove the, the fill. So the fill is right here and I'm just going to do no fill, and then I'm gonna keep the stroke line to a very light, so the 0.25, so that'll be fine. So I'm gonna take that and then move that on here. And what I'm gonna do is I want that alignment to be just right on the circle, but before I do that, let me move that out the way. Let me go ahead and group everything here so that none of that moves. So I'm gonna just put it right here and then I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna do the horizontal align center and it shifted just a little bit and now I can actually do the vertical align center and it came in just right because I had my smart guidelines so that didn't shift any so that's good. So that's exactly in the center where I want it to be. So that's how the dust cover is looking so far. So that's the wood wick now I need to add the little tab. So in order to add the tab, I need to go to the square and make a rectangle. So I'm gonna click. I want my tab to be a half an inch by about 0.34, let's say. So, or it's gonna be the width, I'll say 0 0.34, 0 0.34 by 0.5 for a half an inch and this is the tab this is this part right here you can make it whatever you want but when you have it, it it's going to go into your vessel like this 
And so you could just kind of pull it out. So I did 0.5 and I hit OK. So now that I have that, I'm going to move this to the center. I want it to be right centered. And I'm going to select everything here again to group it. And all I want to do is just do the horizontal align center and it just moved it a little bit, which is fine. So I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see it a little bit better. And again, this is Adobe Illustrator. And I use this just because it's a, a software I've used um, several times. There's other softwares that you can use and bring it in to Cricut Design Space. This is just my chosen one. And so as I zoom in, you see how it's not quite... Like I need this corner to intersect with this circle. So I'm just going to select it and arrow up just a little bit. And it can overlap and that's fine. So now I'm just going to control minus to zoom out. And I did all those groupings. Remember I had groups, so I'm just going to ungroup. I'm going to just start ungrouping. I've ungrouped several things. And this is just, it helps me. So now when I click over stuff, it's all not grouped together. So what I want to make sure that with my rectangle that I have an outline, well, no outline. So I'm going to change my stroke to no stroke. And then I'm going to change the inside fill to white. And that is going to be very important for when I bring it into Cricut Design Space. So I have it selected. I am just going to do the fill, like I said, and go to white. And then I'm going to select the stroke and do none. All right. So now when you see it, you can't really see it, but it's there. I promise. And I'm going to do the same thing with the circle. I'm going to change it to no stroke and the fill to be white. So I have it selected. I'm going to go over here. I don't want any stroke and I want a white fill. And this is important in a print and cut. And I will show you guys shortly because we're talking about this part is the fill. And then in order to not have an outline, I have to change my stroke. Okay, so that's there. So now I wanna select my rectangle and I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna select my circle. And then over here in their pathfinder, this is the pathfinder. I know I have so many different things up. Pathfinder right up here, if you guys can see that. Can you see? There we go, Pathfinder. I am going to unite. So let me see if I can. I'm trying to hold it and do it at the same time. Um, it's right here. It says unite. So I have them selected and then I want it to unite. Sweet. So now that it's united, I've only did, remember, the circle and the rectangle. Now I just need to right click, go to arrange and send to the back. And voila, there is my dust cover and it is pretty much done. All I need to do is select all of it. So I'm going to do a left click and drag. Make sure I'm selecting everything. Right click and group just so I can keep everything together. All right. So now that that is done, all I need to do is add those few steps to this one in order to have the for the cotton wick so now I'm gonna go over to the toolbar I'm gonna select the ellipse tool and I'm just gonna click I'm just gonna do a left click but before I do that I need to at least go back over here and change my stroke to black so I can see what I'm doing so I do a left click and then it's gonna ask me the width and the height this one I'm gonna do it about an, an eighth of an inch 0.125 on both and yeah I could have um, clicked this but it's an ellipse and if you click this that just um, maintains like the proportions it, it has that constraint but I'll select it and hit OK so now that I have that I want to reduce the stroke I'm gonna go up here and reduce the stroke to 0.25 there we go so now that that is done I am going to select everything and group it. 
That way, when I place this, I can select everything and do horizontal alignment as well as the vertical alignment. And that gives me a perfect placement of the circle for the wick. Okay, so now that that is done, I can do the rectangle just like I did before. So now I'm gonna go up, select the rectangle tool, and this is for the tab. So I'm just gonna do a click and it has the same measurements as previous, the width and the height, and I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna place it, I'm gonna move it. Let me select it and move it down where I want the tab to go. All right, and let me just group it really quick, that way it doesn't move. And so I can select, and all I really wanna do is the horizontal alignment and it just moves it slightly. And now I wanna do the same thing I did before. So I'm gonna select a rectangle, remove the stroke, and then add a white fill. Same thing with the circle. I want to, well, let me ungroup first. Ungroup. And then select, and then I do another ungroup, make sure it's all ungrouped. I wanna select the circle, remove the stroke, and the reason why, again, is because I do not want to see lines when I do my print and cut in Cricut Design Space. So now I select a rectangle and a circle, and then I go up to the Pathfinder, and I select Unite. And then it all goes white, which is fine, and then I can right-click, Arrange, and Send to Back. Okay, so all I need to do now is select it, and group. Now I'm ready to go in a Cricut Design Space, just about. So I am going to move what I did previously and place one on one artboard and then the other one, I think it's the other way around. And what do I mean by that? When I go into the artboard, I already labeled the top one. Let me show you. I labeled the top one cotton for like the cotton wick for the circle and then I named the bottom wood. So when I select my art, it'll say wood. So I know it's the wooden wick. So now from here, all I need to do is go into file and I need to export it. And what I'm gonna do is export it out. I'm gonna name it dust covers, use artboards, and I'm gonna do a PNG file and then hit save. Let me, let me do dust covers too, cause I had it earlier. And then hit save. And when I do that, that means it's gonna be ready to go into Cricut Design Space. Now, just in case you are not an Adobe Illustrator user, there are several other uh, programs that you can use. For a continuation of this video, part two, please go to the Candle Dust Covers using Print and Cut Cricut, part two. Also, remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.